can be few people here who've been to Culloden for the first time. You remember that day when you realize Culloden wasn't just a date on our calendar. For myself, and I hope you don't mind if I'm a bit personal in this address, I remember the impact asking my grandfather, John Stewart, Shenner, how long have our family lived in the north of Skye? And alas, in English, he replied, because Gaelic, in my generation, I was of those enlightened parents who thought that it wouldn't do us any good. He replied, we've been here since Culloden. We were stewards of Appen. And he said no more. But I remember that feeling when I stood by the mass graves, not just of the stewards of Appen, but of every other fallen hero and remembered how they attained those graves. But when we remember them, we need to remember too that it wasn't and is not a Scotland-England conflict. It wasn't a Highland-Lowland one, nor a Protestant-Catholic issue, as some might think. There were Protestants and Catholics on both sides, and many of the Jacobites were Episcopalians. It's not even a cause that can be claimed for clans. There were McDonald's and McLeod's on both sides. Families split down the middle. Wives who raised Jacobite supporters behind the backs of their Hanoverian husbands. There were brothers fighting against brothers. The 45 is one of the most complex and misunderstood episodes of our history. An episode with far-reaching effects, not only on the Highlands, on Scotland, on Britain, but on the world. We might, for years, and people have for years, argue the finer points of the historical facts. But if we miss the emotional truth of this place and of this day, we've missed the point completely. And to search out that emotional truth, we must turn to the culture of those who served and those who fell. Virtually all the songs and the poems of the time are Gaelic. There's one Jacobite song in English of the time, that's Johnny Cope. Others have been written afterwards, but those of the time are all in Gaelic. There is, as far as we know, no song or poem in existence of an anti-Jacobite nature. That must speak volumes. So if we listen to the Gaelic poetry and songs of the time, the actual time, from the hearts and the minds of the men and women who were actually engaged in Bliam Hyarli or Fengl on Lachalodger, then we begin to understand. And unlike many wars that are fought today over land or resources, gold in days gone by, oil today, this was a cause that was rooted in a recognition that the rich culture of the Gael was under threat. It might be lost forever if the people themselves did not take a stand. One completely unknown woman in Edinburgh, a Gael, addressed her husband, Alan. Helen, Helen, Satan cattle, and the shakagarams and lot a grian a kyrie lachking, sat a bum hee loch nam brechken. O kora hee, o kora man, o kora hee, ri ri hu, o hee nu o kora man. Elan tain gav skain spigeri. Chino da chlein is kein ich temor, be alla pavor fo vin am peschen, mar gian am mein jereni. O kora hi, o kora man, o kora hi ri 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 yu, o hi yu o kora man. Brown here, Dallin, we cries. Gather your clan, remember your need of them, for great Scotland will be under the sentence of doom unless her own people defend her. Composed in 1745 or maybe six, how timeless this trumpet call. 268 years on, 
It's still true that great Scotland will be devoured if our own people don't take a stand. For our culture to flourish, we must, must take a stand. At the time, some of the bards knew the prince personally, such as Colonel John Stewart of Badenoch. He fought in the front line of battle and afterwards composed his song. Mohrach Yam, Ruhe von.